Yeah, well, I, was, I, I learned a lot while I was writing my album. I think I was in a state of make or break while I was writing Boy Alone. I was like, it's either I lose it completely or I find myself. Hey, Steph. What you doing out here, girl? Okay, wow, this is a first for me. Hi guys, I'm Steph, we're here at Hey Steph TV. I'm here with Omale, and as you can see, it is a very special situation we have going on. What is happening right now, sir? I'm having a tattoo just immediately after my show in Berlin, so yeah, it's a special one, I guess. You just had a wonderful show. You said this is gonna be the last show for a whole while, and you wanted to definitely get this tattoo. Why, what's so important about the tattoo? Um because I wanted to get a tattoo in Berlin. I've always wanted to get a tattoo in Berlin. I have um, I have family in Berlin, and uh, I love the city so much. I just, I wanted to get a tattoo so bad in Berlin, and I'm also gonna get another one in Amsterdam. I already got one, but I'm definitely gonna get, tattoos are like, uh, what's the thing you collect from every city? You know, what's the uh, thing like you- Like a memor me me memorial? No, not a memorial, Jesus, not a memorial. Um, a memorabilia, no. Uh, a souvenir? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's what I do with my tattoos. Yeah. So. That's crazy. Like, imagine <laughs> when, when you go on a world tour, you'll come back and you'll tat it up completely. <laughs> well, okay, so this is a very special scenario. While he's getting his back tattoo, we're going to do the interview. Um, so for the people that maybe don't know that much about you, let's start with Heritage, right? So you're um, from Port Harcourt? Port Harcourt. For someone that's never been there, I've never been there. I'm Kenyan. I've been to a lot of places in East Africa, but I've never been there. For someone that's never been, can you describe it for me? Um, you grew up there, right? Yeah, Potakot is just like me. I am Potakot. I'm like um, from the way I talk, from the way I act, from the way <clears throat> I even dress. It's Potakot. It's like it's a rough city. It's a it's a beautiful city too. A lot of talent and um, in Potakot, everything is raw. And I'm I'm raw. You can tell that I'm raw. <laughs> the talents are raw. The people are. It's it's real life in Potakot. And uh, I think I'm like, I'm like a 100. Um, uh, I'm like a 100 uh, percent. What do they call it? Representation. Yes, represent representation of Potakot. Yeah, that's it. Would you say it was a very like supportive environment for everything you were doing? Because rough and raw can be, you know. Yes. Uh, Tough sometimes growing up. I think Potaka is like, um, I think the reason why I'm, I am where I am today is because I'm Potaka. The reason why I'm this unique, why I'm the way I am today is because I'm Potaka. I don't think um, any other city would have made somebody like me. Um, yes, uh, it was really supportive because everything that made me what I am is Potaka. The roughness, the toughness, the style and everything is actually what made my music the way it is and it's what brought me this far. So I think, yeah, Potakot was like, Potakot is it. If it wasn't for Potakot, I don't think I would have been here. And I think my people, I don't think, I know my people still, they can tell, they see it when they see me, they know that, I'm, yeah, this is, this is Potakot. What's something very specific you only say there that you could teach me? Ah boy. A boy. A boy. <laughs> Say it, a boy. A boy. What does that mean? <laughs> it means uh, my boy or hey boy. Or a boy. It's like hi. But even for a girl to just say to other people, it's like I could say a ah, boy. A ah, boy is like, yeah. Oh boy, it's like hi. Oh boy. Yeah. Wow, thanks. Okay, I learned hey, something today. Girl, you say a girl. A girl. Yeah. Okay. How do you say um, you look beautiful or you look handsome? Be fine. Be fine? You just, you're fine. Okay, well, I know that. You're fine. I can say. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, you also say you're fine, like, yeah, in I mean, other it's, countries. It's, right? Yeah, it's very similar. It's, it's simple, yeah. What's the most trouble you've ever been in Fotaco growing up? Um, I grew up among um, criminals. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Crazy. So a lot of trouble. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I grew up in Marine Base. And uh, if you know that place very much, you know that, I mean... That is like one place in Potaco where people didn't used to go at the time I was I was growing up. So, yeah, I grew up around criminals, thugs, and stuff like that. I grew up around pi pipeline, illegal businesses and stuff. So it was a lot of trouble for me. But I mean, it's like what I said. It's it's part of the things that made me what I am today, and I'm really grateful for um, growing up in such an environment. I wouldn't wish anybody to grow up like that, but I thank God I did. It's it is actually, like I said, one of the things that made me who I am today. Yeah. Okay, 
And so you start music at what age? I would say I started music professionally three years ago. No, I wouldn't say professional three years ago. Like, I started singing three years ago, but, like, I... Like, the real beginnings of your music. The beginning of my music. I yeah. know you're called Lil' King and you used to rap. Oh, yeah, that, that was a long time ago. Sometimes I don't even want to count that. Well, yeah. everybody starts somewhere, right? Okay, yeah, so, like, I'd say I started music, like, around when I was probably 15 or even less. Or 13, yeah, so, yeah. It was me and my cousin, Richard. Yeah, Richard is in the room tonight. Hi, Richard. <laughs> so we started the whole thing together. I used to be Lil King. He used to be Rich XT. And we used to rap. We used to be in a group called Big Two. And um, it, it went on from there. I, I, um, Richie stopped because he, you know, he, he lost, he lost focus. <laughs> <laughs> he lost focus, he lost interest. He lost focus. So I, I kept up, but he, 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 he always believed and supported me. And I stopped rapping and I started making beats for people. Uh, I became a producer full time. And then later I started writing music. Then I realized that I can actually even sing. And then I started singing. And three, just three years ago, I put out like my first song and I got signed. I moved to Lagos and I dropped my first project, Get Late. And I dropped What Have We Done and then Boy Alone. And I'm in Germany tonight and I sold out my show in Berlin. And yeah, it's been like that. Seems very fast paced when you put it like that. Do you sometimes like, you're like, whoa, where did, how did I get here so quick? Do you ever wonder that? Sometimes I, I mean, it's like, yeah, I do. I actually do. Because um, in, in my chart, like before I got signed, I had like this paper where I wrote down every single step I was going to take to become who I want to be. But I got signed and I moved to Lagos and things have things moved from from zero to fifty and uh, this is this is like part of the dream. This is like not the dream. This is part of it and yeah. But I'm really grateful it has happened this fast because yeah. What is the dream? Um, the dream is big. It's really big. How big? You there's no it's too big. big. It's big where it's big that. It's the end of dreams. It's like there's no uh, there's n there, there's no other dream possible. Do you understand what I mean? Do you understand? I understand. I so I'm yeah I do I, I, I do you know. no because I have I have a very big dream for myself as a person also so I can understand that there's like a dream you can have that's so big that it would even it's speaking about it is like yes, yeah is the, the end of dreams you can't dream more than that I feel like you can't dream more than that. That's how big the dream is. So, but since you're already so fast in getting everything, like stepping towards this very, very big dream, do you think you're going to reach that before 30? Uh, I'm turning 26 in a couple. And, um, Maybe, possibly? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, anything can happen. I mean, I got here and like this, where I am today, I was hoping when I started, before I got signed and moved to Lagos, I was hoping that... Um, where I am today, maybe in 2025, that's where I'll, this is where I'll be here in 2025, but I'm here in 2023, so I can definitely get there. Yeah. That's crazy. It's unbelievable. I'm so happy for you that everything's working out that well. But I have a qu few questions. So since you started producing first and then writing, right? Is it hard for you to work with other producers? Like if other people give you beats like and right you, now? yeah, like for because you used to produce and write, right? Yes. It, um, I think it just made me. Or uh, do you just use your own. Like, no, no. I actually for a long time I've not made a beat by myself. I've not produced any of my stuff. And I've just been working with other producers, but I've just been really picky with my beats, like just because I know exactly what I want to hear, and just one tone goes off, and I, 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 I don't fuck with the beat, but. I think it's a good thing and also a bad thing. Like the normal beats every artist will listen to and pass. I will, I'll find something inside that I like because I know exactly what I want to hear. I don't know if you understand. I know exactly what I want to hear. So it's a blessing, it's a course because I know too much. It feels like I know, <laughs> okay. I know too much. And, and yeah, yeah, it's just a little more difficult to work with other people, but at the same time, it makes things easier. It's just like, it's a blessing on the course. Because you know exactly what you want. You can communicate it. But at the same time, someone's like, man, he always tells me what to do. Yes, exactly. And I'm very difficult to work with. I, sometimes I wonder how my team even cope with me. Because um, 
yeah, it's not easy, man. Because <laughs> you're such a perfectionist, or what's so difficult about you? Such a perfectionist, such a perfectionist, big one. Like, um, I can make like I can make five songs with one beat. Like, my team is like, this is it, this is it. But I, I'm still turning in new songs with the same beat. Like, I'm going home. I'm not, I'm not okay. It's like. I don't know. It's, it's a blessing, but it's not the best Ad advice to creatives. Um, perf perfectionism is not. It's not always the best. Sometimes it slows you down, but it gives you a crown in heaven. Trust me, it does. I will say I kind of noticed a bit of the perfectionism with the tattoo. Although I understand with a tattoo, I can really understand being perfectionist. But you were like, okay, no, ah, uh, be smaller, be bigger, more in the middle, more up, more down. So you have a specific vision for you, and that's actually something beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is very beautiful because, like, before the start of everything, you see the end, and if it doesn't go that way, it is not okay. Yeah. Is that was deep as hell. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like wow. That's yeah, deep. This yeah. is, what is this? Lucas tattooing you with like wisdom? <laughs> yeah, you have a picture of everything just exactly how you want them to be. And if anything goes differently, it's, it's fucked up. You have to start over. It's like, as I say, it's a blessing. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. But if you get it right, like I said, it gives you a crown in heaven. I have a very like general question. Which values are most important to you as a person? Discipline. Um, I am more about self-growth. I feel like sometimes I'm way above my age, and um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't want to start talking like an old man, <laughs> but yeah, I'm. A, I, I'm a very disciplined person. I. I have a life, and I have a mind that's way, 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 way very grown and um maybe an old soul yeah i think i'm an old soul too because um yeah but most important i'm a very disciplined person i i say i do this and i do this trust me i say i don't do this and i never do that where do you where did you learn that from from your mom or uh, where did you learn discipline because usually that's something you learn it is um while i was writing boy alone i learned discipline yeah, well, I, was, I, I learned a lot while I was writing my album. I think I was in a state of make or break while I was writing Boy Alone. I was like, it's either I lose it completely or I find myself. I think writing this album kind of taught me so much. And um, yeah, I learned, I learned a lot. I grew up so much while writing this album. And I think I've always had that in me. But this album just brought a whole lot of it out. And... Yeah. In my research, I saw that while you were writing that, there was a lot going on. I feel like there was anxiety, depression, a lot of things you were going through with, you know, mental health just in general. Yeah. How did you cope with that? What was your coping mechanism for, for that? Um, like I said, it was like, it was a situation of make or break. So pressure creates you know, diamonds kind of a thing. Uh, I think so. Yeah, that's a perfect description. But um, I found my way. It was either I get lost or I found a way. So I chose the other way instead. And I think I found, I found a way out. And the discipline was one of them. Yeah, I just became stronger and uh, mentally tough and everything. Yeah. Do you think that on the one hand, that situation is what caused the album to be so special? Because I feel like you're not i hope you're not going to go through that kind of pain again in a sense you know for the next album you're going to create but at the same time maybe that's what made it so beautiful oh yeah um one thing that i know that's so unique about me is i make music with real life I, I don't think i have to i have to always go through pain or that kind of situation for me to make a beautiful album because um my music is not hype my music is real life and listen to my album. Everything is like real life. Like I can make a song out of this, out of this interview, out of getting this painful tattoo and and acting like I'm okay. <laughs> I was gonna say you didn't even flinch once. Yeah, I mean I can make a song out of it, and then people would relate because I I feel like I've been every single situation where I have been is like I know there are a lot of kids 
that are going to go through that. There's a lot of people in the world. It's like 8 billion people now or 7 point something billion people. And if I'm going through something, I know there's a lot of other people who's going through it. Who is probably my age or turning my age and they'll go through it. So my music, I make my music out of real life. And um, it's always beautiful. Real life is beautiful. It's better than hype. <coughs> trust me. It's better than um, just singing about partying and clubbing and drinking you know real life is is the shit and real life really doesn't have to be sad to be beautiful real life could be love but it just has to be real surely what's your reality currently like for your health for you as a person but yeah i'm in such a very good place right now um i'm in such a very tough place mentally i am i'm grown trust me man i'm so grown right now um What's, what have you grown in the most? From looking back to before you created the album to now, as a person and then as an artist, I think those are two di separate questions to ask. Yeah, I think... Um, as a person, let's start with how much have... What, what have you grown in the most as a person? I have grown into how to accept what it is, that it is. I've grown into realizing that... Um, that I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a human being on earth and I have so much abilities, but I am still limited. You can't, don't lie to yourself, right? Eh? You're still limited. There are a lot of things. Health can just catch up with you today and you're gone. So yeah, you just have to accept that you're human. Do all that you can do in your human abilities and let the rest go. I learned that and it's working for me. Yeah, but the most important thing is do all in your human abilities that you can do and let the rest go yeah you are kind of an old man in that body <laughs> I said it. you're an old soul for sure richard did you hear this wow such wise words and how would you say you've progressed and grown as an artist would you say melodies lyrics um beat oh, yeah. selection like what is the m most progress you've done there you said the human makes the music Correct. Grow as a human. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the music is gonna grow. So, um, yeah, I've grown spiritually. I've grown mentally. So, the music, the music is definitely gonna go up. Every every situation I find myself, I make music with it. I was down. I was depressed, and I make, and I made boy alone with it. I'm in a place now where I feel so alive, and um, I'm gonna make music with it, and it's always gonna be real. Sure, for sure. What has been your biggest win in life till now? <laughs> my biggest win in life is um, realizing the power of my mind. Yeah, that's my biggest win in life. Nothing, nothing. Nothing has, um, there's nothing I can measure with it. I have learned a lot about the mind, a lot about myself, about my mind, and... It's, it's out of this world, trust me. It's like God himself. Do you understand? I think I do. So I have a few questions to lyrics. Okay. 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 Yeah. So this is, the, the lyrics go, Water no get enemy till you fall for Oshimiri. And it's like water is a human necessity till you fall into the river. Kind of a thing. It means that um, water has no enemies. Like, you know, water doesn't have enemy, you know. It's like water fits in every place. Everybody drinks water to survive. Swim water, you do everything with water, but until you fall in an ocean, that's when you know water kills. That's what it means. So, what, in a deeper sense, cause I, cause I was like, and I still don't get it. I'm, I'm like, I'm not the wise old I'll, man I'll, that's I'll like- I'll break it down, I'll break it down. Break it down for me, cause I'll I still don't down. get it. I'll so, break it down. And I get that, you know, there's certain things in life that can possibly, seem like oh i need this yes. but then you're like oh my god it's actually killing me correct yeah. but is it what is it what is the deeper is it love is it what is it what is it what is it <laughs> <laughs> it, it could mean so many things but it means what it what i said it means that water is good for you to survive water is beautiful water is sweet yeah but until you fall in the deep sea it's when you know that water can kill 
you can you can make you can make anything with it you can make any sense out of it it's a lot it's very deep you can make so it. yeah but that's why i'm trying to like grasp like what you were trying to like what what's your water <laughs> okay let me think where was i when i um i was in pain bro i was in so much pain when i was writing this song man um I don't know. I was just down. I was just in a place where I was I was losing my mind, bro. I was really losing my mind. I was um I was smoking a lot. So substance abuse, I was, yeah, depression. I was smoking too much. Yeah. I was down. Um you know what I say when when you exhaust all like um it's really nothing in life that was like nice. It was the only place that I could find that found comfort while I was making this album was just going to the studio and just singing anything that comes to my mind. And it took me so long to write this album because I was, it's like the album was my therapy. So. It was your therapy and kind of your diary? Yes. It was like everything that I felt, I was just pouring it on the album. Everything I felt, I was just pouring it on the record. So yeah. But you were also in therapy when you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had therapy a couple sessions. Yeah, yeah. That didn't work out too well. A couple sessions. It was just yeah. a couple sessions, yeah. For me, um, when I was growing up and with my, my mother specifically, uh, mental health therapy was always kind of stigmatized to be something very bad and something very negative. And it's like, oh, you don't actually need that. But I thought it's so brave that you seeked help when you needed it. Um, is this something you would consider still doing now? Um, I don't, I don't think I will right now because um, it's, it's not bad. You need, sometimes you need to talk to somebody. Yeah. Sometimes there are a lot of, you, there's a lot of fucked up things in your head that you just don't want to share with your friends or your family members or people who are close to you. You just want to talk to somebody neutral. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it's therapy is good, but I think that where I am right now, um, I discovered so much about, like I said, about the mind and just... Yeah, you just have to feed your mind good, good food, and you'll be fine. Trust me. Um, How do you cope with things now? Like before, you were saying you used to smoke a lot, and you're like, ah, oh, and this like such, such such a deep place. How do you cope with things now? Yeah, I'm 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 chilling, bro. <laughs> I get tattoos on my back. <laughs> I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Um, yeah, I'm chilling right now. I'm chilling. I'm writing my album, uh, the deluxe of my album, and um, yeah, I'm I'm actually done with the deluxe of the album. And you know, life is sweeter right now. Like, cause yeah, my people. If you're if you're going through shit, just deal with your mind. That's where everything is. Your mind. Trust me. It's life is really beautiful when when you're feeding your mind right. Yeah. I think those are some really lovely words for, for, for everybody out there because I, I struggle with a lot of mental health issues too. Surprise! We didn't see that coming, did we? <laughs> She's crazy. <laughs> no, of course. I think everybody that has like high pressure um, in their life and jobs that they do, I think there's a lot of people that go through that. And even if you don't, like depression is so real. I think in yeah, like it's a... Real. It's, it's real. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was at the verge of... Uh, man, bro, I was suicidal, man. Trust me, I was really fucked up, but uh, I think I had to be there to actually help the people who are there right now to get out of that place. Cause, I mean, it's it to take a real person like me to go there and then make music out of it, and you know, talk about it so openly. About it so openly, how I'm a mess and how I think and how I'm fucked up and everything. It's like. I'm not sure you find Afrobeat artists who is gonna who who do that right now. Everybody's out there saying Afrobeat is not so deep and Afrobeat is just vibes and shit. Nah, I mean that's why everybody's just doing hype. The real music is is dying. That's why people like me is all will always strive. People like me will always be there because like I'm one of the realest you can find and I'm I'm putting it in, on Afrobeat and it's new. You know what I mean? People call it Afro depression and shit, but don't worry. Ten years, you will go back to this album when you're fucked up. <laughs> yeah, your kids, everybody goes through this shit in life. So, it is what it is. You come back to listen to me every day, every time. Because I'll always be the one to tell you the real stuff. 
And everybody was just being in the club. In two months, and I'm done. After you leave the club at night, what do you listen to? Some real shit. Somebody telling you what, is, like, what life really is, isn't it? I think so. I also see, um, I admire that you see you want longevity for your art. Um, that's why I think you've said a couple of times now, it's not hype. You don't want anything nah. to do with hype. It's just real music. It's like, it's, it's, it's a 20 years thing. It's a 20 years thing and you come back and listen to, to my, my, my stuff and they still sound fresh. And that's, that's the most important thing to me. Like that's, that's, where I, that's, that's what I spend more time trying to achieve and not just come today and gone tomorrow. What do you want your legacy to be if ever you leave this earth? I want to I want I want people to grow up. I want to raise people with my music. I want I want kids to grow because like I'm making music with every single beat of my life, like every step of my life. And I know a lot of kids are going through this. When they turn 20, when they turn 21, they will have to go through this as a boy in their life. And somebody had made music for them with it and they would listen to it and they would relate to it. And when I turned 21, I, I, I made music for them, things that I went through when I was 21, and they would listen and they would grow and they would learn and they will keep growing. That's, that's one thing that I want to do so bad with my music. I want people to grow up with me. I want people to, I want to help people grow up the right way instead of just partying all night and stuff, you feel me? We'll party, definitely, we'll get drunk, <laughs> we'll smoke and, you know, do some things, but yeah, that's real life after that, that's, that's real life. What do you love about yourself the most? Uh, my strength, my strength, yes, my, my mind is very strong. Your back tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> I love that too, I mean, I do. What is something you wish you could change about yourself? Like, if you could do this. Like, with me, it's my temper. I'm not going to lie. I have a bad temper. It's a Kenyan thing, yeah. But if you could do this, something you could change immediately. Let me think, let me think. Something that I could change immediately. I mean, the way I, I was raised with a lot of... Um, I was so timid while growing up because I was raised in a very poor place. Um... You know, I was, my parents were so broken that, that put a lot of um, insecurities in my head. I grew up with that. Uh, it took me so long to find myself. And uh, yeah, that's one thing that I, I, I want to make sure that my little brothers and my kids and everybody that I know that are like young, I want to make sure that I talk that shit out of them. It's, it's one thing I wish I could change, but I feel like People like me have to go through things like this to help the other people. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm that. It is what it is. So insecurities that resulted from like financial, the financial situation oh, yeah. of how you were raised. How I was raised definitely put a lot of um, insecurities. I mean, I, my, my, my parents used to be so, so broke that, that, that we have to wait for the other kids to finish wearing their clothes and then give it to us to wear it. Do you understand how broke that? I mean, you you don't, I guess you, 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 you never can understand. You just can't understand. My parents used to be so broken. And that, that keeps your mind locked. It takes a lot of mental strength to grow and see yourself above just that. You don't understand. Growing up like that and you spending 10 years of your life like that and the first 15 years of your life and you're like that, bro, it's like, it, it fucks you up. And um, yeah, it takes a lot of strength and a lot of learning and open-mindedness and wanting to go for that, to actually break yourself out of that cage. And uh, that's one thing that I wish I never suffered, but I'm also grateful that I did because like I said, everything that I went through it's part of the things that made me what I am today. Peace. I feel like I didn't, I didn't expect that because, um, from my understanding, like your mom was super supportive of like oh, your yeah, musical mom, career, but like, but like, how was she able? Was she she wasn't able to financially support 
financially support you in your dream. My mom has been like, she's the sweetest heart in the world. Like, my mom? Nah. What's something she always says to you? Omali. <laughs> she just always says Omali. That's it. She, she doesn't scold you. She doesn't scold you. No, I mean, she... I have... What's that? Yeah, I have... um. I have this musical background. My mom has just been there for me. Everything, anything I wanted to do. I wanted to dance, she said go. I wanted to play football, go. I wanted to start making beats, go. She's just been supportive. She just trusted my choices. And so I don't important. know if, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure anything could, uh, could have been more than that. Just, just being there for me, for every choice that I make. Just believing that it's the right thing that I chose. Yeah, my mom is, this, is my sweetest heart. She's my first love. She's How does she feel about your successes? She's been to one of your concerts? She's happy. She's really happy. I'm going to take her somewhere, just, uh, take her somewhere, fly her somewhere, and just chill. You know, instead of flying one of these girls, I'm just going to fly my mom. Go and chill with my mom. <laughs> Talk about that. You know what's so crazy? Today you, you posted something today, I think, yeah, where you're like, yeah. T thinks I'm toxic. Shake my head. Me? Are you toxic? <laughs> On, honestly, am I? am I toxic? Do I look toxic? Come on, what are you saying? I'm not. Am I? I don't know though. Because you're you know? asking. <laughs> I feel like you know. Because it's because it could it possibly be that maybe. Maybe in yeah. romance, there is a bit of a few hiccups here and there with you. Because I mean, we already established. But you, you really can't tell. But I feel like one thing that I. I try my best. I try to be the best that I can. Even in relationships with women. Even in relationships, even with women. I am... Um, uh, there's just a lot that I can't be that everybody expects. But, um, yeah, I try my best. But one thing that I know that I'm not is toxic. But I always come back, yeah. But I'm not toxic. But you're not toxic. I'm not toxic. Okay, okay, fine. Well, I always go back, but I'm not... It's not, it's not like... It's not toxic. So as my last question to you yeah. for this interview, it's a very big question. Okay. What is love for you? Describe what is love? What does love mean to you? As a man of very deep words, I think it would be beautiful to hear what it is. And then I'll teach you how to say, uh, I love you in German. How about that? Okay, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay. Um, what is love? What is love? Omale. That's one thing that I, I've, I've, I've been searching for. Um, You've not experienced love. Yeah, because I feel like I have not. Like, everybody who's who's coming around, apart from my family, my mom, my brothers, people I've been with since I was a kid, that really love me. Like, there's this unconditional love that they just love you for whatever. Just love you. That's, you can only, I feel like you can only get that from your mom. But um, love in relationships, I don't know, bro, because it feels like everybody... Everybody loves you to survive. You feel like even, I mean, that unconditional love. If you find somebody who loves you for anything you do, for anyhow you are, shitty, messy. If you find somebody who loves you that way, stay there. You can't find it anywhere else. It's, it's so hard. It's so hard to find these days. And that's 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 what's, what that's what love is to me. That unconditional love. Love me when I'm fucked up. Love me when I'm messy. Just love me. Just love me because you love me. Not because sex. Not because money. Not because I'm cheating or something. You just love because you love. It's not because of anything. It's just because you actually love. If you find somebody who loves you that way, that is love. Well, how about I teach you how to say I love you then in German? Yes. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. So in German, in German you say, Ich liebe dich. I love you. Ich? Ich liebe dich. That's beautiful. That's perfect. Ich, ich liebe dich. Yeah. Ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, heftig. Ich mach nur ein Interview mit dir.